Howdy. You know, there were some toys in history that were simply bad ideas. In fact, some were such dangerous, stupid ideas for toys that they were completely recalled and never allowed back on the shelf. Unfortunately, some of these toys caused very serious harm to people. And some may just leave you bewildered and wondering, how did anyone consider this a safe kid's toy? So we're going to look through nearly 100 years worth of trinkets today to find the 10 banned and most dangerous toys of all time. And just a heads up in advance, my deepest respects go out to any families or individuals who might have been injured by these toys. What did the doll do to your hair? Ate it. I can't imagine what you went through, and this video means no disrespect to you. Anyway, on to the countdown. Starting with number 10, Slip and Slide. From Whammo! AKA the Wet Banana. Huh, really? I actually had one of these in the 90s. They were very popular in Australia. I still remember the first time I slid down this thing. Raz and I had tons of fun sliding down these in the backyard. In fact, slip and slides have been around since way back in 1961. And as I said, you may remember this toy as Wet Banana. Yeah, that name didn't age very well. Could that be Mom on Wet Banana? Anyway, between 1961 and 1992, nearly 9 million of these were sold to the public. However, come 1993, the slip and slides were officially recalled. Because these slides were not designed with the adult or teenager's weight or size in mind. In fact, tragically, by 1993, one teenager and seven adults had become paralyzed or received neck injuries after playing with these slides, mainly because of the abrupt stop at the end. Although the slides were recalled in the 90s, they reappeared on the shelves in the 2000s with one major safety warning, indicating that only ages 5 to 12 should ever use these slides. Though I do seem to remember one particular critic that reminded us of this ad. Could that be Mom on Wet Banana? It is! Mom! And I kind of thought that having Mom on the Wet Banana in your Wet Banana commercial was kind of an endorsement of allowing Mom on the Wet Banana? No, you quit while you're ahead, boo. I know what I'm doing. You see, because of an adult or teenager's weight or height, if they dive onto the water slide, they may abruptly hit or stop in such a way that could permanently damage their spine. The diver's forward momentum drives the body into the neck and compresses the spine. And no one should be messing around with your back or spinal cord unless they're a doctor. Anyway, even with the stern warning label, the slip and slide is still around and popular as ever. I see him quite often at my local mall. And the new wet banana super slide 30 feet long. My, my, that's a f***ing big banana. And for number nine, Aquadots. Wowzers, how did they not think this one through in manufacturing? So with Aquadots by Spin Master Firms, your artwork may come alive on the canvas. Or sadly, it may put people in a coma. Kids can arrange these small beads in patterns, spray them with water, and the beads will fuse together, creating art. What can you dot, then spray, for fun that stays? So what could possibly be dangerous about a bunch of small, easily ingestible little art dots that look like candy? Oh no, not just choking, it gets worse. You see, when some kids inevitably swallowed these beads, we discovered they were actually covered in gamma-hydroxybutric acid, aka commonly known as the date assault drug. I'll let you fill in the blanks there. As a result, some kids had seizures and fell into comas. Tragically, there was even reports of permanent critical injuries due to these art dots. One family even took Spin Master Firms and Toys R Us to court due to permanent injuries to their son. Personally for my niece, I don't get her any craft materials I haven't already tried eating myself when I was younger. So I only get a good old non-toxic Play-Doh. Oh, okay, yeah. And those soaps you get from the store that look like candy. Well, how was I to know? I was six and they looked tasty. And for number eight... CSI Fingerprint Examination and Forensic Lab Kits. Holy cow, the FDA really botched up bad with this one. And this one was uncomfortably recently, in 2007 in fact. So maybe you like CSI, or maybe you just tolerate it like me. Either way, CSI has had a massive cultural impact for both kids and adults. I'm assuming kids saw their parents watching it and somehow didn't think it looked incredibly boring. He taped himself up. Anyway, apparently enough kids actually watched this show to justify a toy kit for CSI. 
No surprise, these forensic dust kits allowed kids to dust for fingerprints, similarly to how it was done on the show. But how this actually managed to get by the FDA is just beyond me. Because the powder in the kits actually had asbestos in it. In fact, the Asbestos Awareness Association found it to have over 7% tremolite. That is one of the most fatal types of asbestos of all. How the bejeebus did that ever get by the FDA? The people who use asbestos cement siding report with satisfaction. Oh, that sucks. That being said, just a reminder, there is no safe level of exposure for any type of asbestos. And kids could just waft this dust all over the house to look for fingerprints. Brilliant, guys. Why not just save time and start a sharp scissors running club for all the CSI fans in the neighborhood? CSI, we've got a new case for you. What bonehead in the FDA let this CSI kit on the shelves? But if you take on this case, just be careful what dust you use for fingerprints. And for number seven, it's a swing wing. It's a what? It's a swing wing. Prepare for what may be the dumbest idea you will ever hear, with the most frustratingly catchy song since that stupid shark song. To avoid it getting seared into your brain like it's been to mine, I'll only play a small part of the song. It's a swing wing, it's a wing wing, a brand new transit grand fun thing. It's a what? So do you want a hula hoop? Well, according to my age analytics, you probably don't want a hula hoop at all. But if you do, no judgment, you probably didn't want that hula hoop for your head. But hey, people in 1965 had a coffee, cigarette, and donut for breakfast and considered it healthy. So maybe they somehow thought these neck-twisting streamer hats were a popular trend. But even these 60s kids look in literal agony as they jank around their heads in the stupidest hat in the world. Like, this thing looks deeply uncomfortable to wear. Unfortunately, getting a neck-supported hula hoop hat resulted in some very serious injuries. It was swung by moving the head back and forth in a twisty, jerky motion. Perhaps surprising people of the 1960s, this resulted in cerebral hemorrhaging and spinal injuries. This is of course tragic, but seriously, what in our painfully injury-prone homo sapien history has ever indicated that the human neck is a flexible organ to be twisted and played around with? I feel neck pain just watching these poor kids. Oh, and once again, fair warning, don't play too much of this song. I watched half of it, and I have been humming that stupid Swing Wing song in my head for the last week. It's a Swing Wing. It's, it's a, a swing, swing Wing. It's... Oh yeah, good idea, Boo. Right, let's move on. It's a Swing Wing. It's a what? Number six. Snack Time Cabbage Patch Doll. Oh, this one is just too terrible to be true. I swear, history just gave us this one on a platter. So if you're old enough to remember, you might recall the Cabbage Patch Dolls. Cabbage Patch Kids! Come with birth certificate, adoption papers, and bio card, each sold separately. They were so popular, they actually managed to make Bacon Boy Peppa Pig look obscure. And I'll marry Pedro, or Danny, and I'll do that too. We just couldn't escape these things. Every second person seemed to have one. Mattel released the infamous Snack Time Kid, and it comes with real chewing action, with such overpowered motorized jaws that it could actually swallow a kid's hair straight off their head. No ability to reverse or stop these jaws. Constructed of small motors, unable to reverse or stop, the rollers inside continued to go and go until the object entered and exited successfully. An unstoppable child chomping doll. What could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? And unfortunately, the doll couldn't associate between the plastic snacks and, well, literally anything else fed to it. I mean, did Mattel really not assume that kids would try to feed it literally anything else that wasn't bolted down? And unfortunately, some kids accidentally ended up feeding the doll their hair. Unwittingly, their hair. As a result, some children suffered injuries to their hands, while others got their hair caught in the doll's mouth. One poor girl was even left partly bald when the doll snagged her hair and it was nearly pulled out of her scalp. Got into the doll's mouth and it start, started going up. And if you're watching this now, 27-year-old woman, I'm sorry, that must have been traumatizing. In one extreme case, one mother even had to chop off all of her daughter's hair just to stop the monstrous thing from swallowing her daughter's hair. The face was so tight against the top of her head 
pushed down like this, there was no way I could cut the hair. In 1997, after Mattel had received over 100 complaints of their cannibal dolls, they made the biggest recall they've ever done, with a full refund offered to over half a million owners. Hmm? Yeah, it's a good point. Uh, some people might need to use that for a toupee. I guess Mattel figured that dolls that eat parts of your children won't be too popular on the Christmas shopping list that year? Well, who would have thunk it? Number 5. Jarts, aka Lawn Darts. Whether you consider this game horseshoes or darts, Jarts can be downright dangerous. In fact, since Jarts first started production, thousands of people have been sent to the emergency rooms due to Jarts injuries. And sadly, at least one person has been killed by Jarts. But even for those who weren't too badly injured, I'm sure they weren't too pleased about being impaled by these things. Basically, Jarts has played a little bit like horseshoes in that you set up the plastic rings and throw the uh, foot-long metal tip darts and hope like hell they don't hit someone passing by. These missiles, as the box calls them, not only have caused thousands of serious injuries, but also many broken windows and car dents. By October 1970, the FDA required Jarts have an even bigger label saying, Warning, not a toy for use by children. May cause serious or fatal injury. Huh, that can't have been particularly wild marketing for their product. Plus the Jarts could no longer be sold in any toy departments of any kind. Sadly, even this labeling didn't seem to have much of an effect, and the injuries just kept rolling in. By December, the US Secretary of Health, Education and Welfare was asked to use emergency provisions of the Child Protection and Toy Safety Act to outright ban jarts. The judge failed to uphold the ban though. And it wasn't until a tragic death in 1987 that jarts were banned. Over the eight years since the ban was first denied, over 6,100 Americans had to have visits to the emergency rooms due to jarts, and three deaths occurred. The main problem was the long metal tips of these things. It actually makes them quite similar to the Imperial Roman missile weapon, the Plumbata. And as you can imagine, those Romans weren't aiming for plastic circles. So it's a bit like giving a kid a ninja star and watching them play hacky sack with it. What do you think was going to happen? These are real ninja stars, so you can throw them and they stab into wood and cardboard. By this point, as you might have guessed, selling jarts of any kind in the USA is outright illegal. On the plus side, if there are still any lawn dart enthusiasts out there, Canada did release a plastic version, which is hopefully still fun and considerably less dangerous for kids. Hopefully in the future, we don't make toys and lawn games out of Roman war weapons. And for the fourth most dangerous toy, the clacker balls. Just move them up and watch them explode shrapnel injuries may occur. So in the late 1960s, a lot of people suddenly started playing with two metal balls on a string, aka clackers. And seeing these things in action is actually quite a spectacle. Unfortunately, as fun as they were, many would also explode. The resulting debris basically acted as shrapnel from an exploding bomb, potentially sending glass shards into users' faces and anyone nearby. But already by the early 70s, millions of these clackers had been sold to consumers. No, I can imagine Bruce Lee. <laughs> Interestingly, we once again have a toy that resembles a weapon from history. In this case, clackers were quite similar to what's known as the Boladoras, the Argentinian cowboy's weapon of choice. A throwing weapon typically used to hunt and tangle the legs of animals. Anyway, the explodey problems typically came from the acrylic plastic versions, also known as plexiglass, a well-known alternative to glass. So we now have millions of cowboy glass weapon projectiles that explode. What could possibly go wrong? But when the toy manufacturers tried making clackers out of plastic instead, even these exploded. And this time, the inevitable boom was seen as a blinding hazard. So now, the Prevention of Blindness Society issued a warning about clackers. And, you know, blindness warnings aren't particularly good marketing for toys. But I do believe there's a silver lining to many bad situations. And I think the silver lining here is that the FDA set new safety standards that required stringent testing and record keeping, all because of clackers. But eventually, our explodey clacker toy was banned, and the Consumer Product Safety Commission was formed. So stringent child toy safety standards? Well, you can thank clackers for that. By 1976, the clackers were deemed a mechanical hazard. But fortunately, 
Decades of research has provided modern society with materials that do not explode. So if you so choose, safe modern versions of clackers can potentially be bought. Though personally, I never would. I find that endless clicking sound really annoying. And for the third most dangerous toy... Uh, I feel bad about putting some of these choices on the list, because some kids really can learn a lot from these toys. The creepy crawlers allow kids to make their own unique creative inventions. This product taught craft skills to kids in injection plastic molding. Because apparently Mattel just threw up their hands and said, fine kids, you make your own toys. You see, back in the 1960s, many kids were either looking at the military or a manufacturing job for their future jobs. So kids were encouraged to learn basic manufacturing processes in toy form. Known as a thing maker in the 60s, kids had to squirt the goop into molds before heating them up on a searing 200 degrees Celsius open hot plate, resulting in little plastic bugs. And you know, people of the 60s discovered that a searing hot heater isn't the safest toy for kids. And even if a parent trusted their kid with an open hot plate, the problems didn't stop there. When the kids heated and created these creepy crawler, they were potentially exposed to toxic fumes. And funnily enough, many of the commenters talking about creepy crawlers say they remember best being burned and the funny smell. Probably not a great combination. Although Mattel discontinued the item eventually, by 1992, Toy Max had brought them back. And I actually remember the ads for these Toy Max ones when I was a kid. They're squirmy and wormy and purple and green, the grossest little creatures that you've ever seen. And by the 90s, the crawlers had some new safety measures. Instead of the kids injecting the goop into sizzling hot molds, the molds were put inside an oven that was secured until it cooled. Nowadays though, the fad of creepy crawlers has well and truly died down. And I couldn't find any place on the internet to buy a modern version of creepy crawlers. Ah well, on to the next one. Creepy Crawlers Workshop with Plastic Goof. And for the second most dangerous toy, Gilbert's Glass Blowing Set. This year at Gilbert, we present the finest toy line in our history. Gilbert. You may not know this toy manufacturer now, but by jeebus you will. They produce such friendly and child safe toys as the children's glass blowing set. You know, why not give a 60s kid a glass, a tube, and an open hot flame and see what they make? He is really hoping not too much permanent scarring. Speaking as someone who has burned his face off before, I would know. Open flames are no joke. And just to top it off, Gilbert's toys are endorsed by Superman himself. Possibly because he's the only thing alive that wouldn't be damaged by these trinkets. Gilbert marketed this as a necessary device to help children learn a valuable skill when it was released in 1909. Kids had to learn to glass blow in 1909? It's worth mentioning though, Gilbert may have helped bring about the scientific minds that have helped shape our future today. Well, the ones that weren't burned, injured, or scared off anyway. Gilbert's various kits taught the fundamentals of science and let kids do dangerous experiments on their own, including with molten lead, hydrochloric acid, and melted glass. Or possibly something even worse. Stick with me for a second, it's about to get even weirder. This is our story. And now for a couple of quick honorable mentions. The Sky Dancers. Fly for me, just for me, sky dance and dance for me. If you were alive in the 90s, you might remember these soaring concussion makers. In 1994, Gloop released these flying ballerina type dolls, and they were a reasonable success at 9 million sold. Unfortunately, many injuries were reported over the years, ranging from temporary blindness to a broken rib to broken teeth. Even facial lacerations that required stitches. Ouchies. Eventually, by the year 2000, nearly 9 million of these were recalled by Galoob. And you might know Galoob nowadays as Hasbro. The Moon Shoes. I gotta admit, when I saw this toy, I thought, hey, I'd actually try this. I love trampolines. I even have one I use in my living room all the time. Sure, as a kid, my old trampoline gave me a concussion, but it was worth it. Jumping was awesome. As Bustle pointed out, these moon shoes essentially attach tiny trampolines to the feet of uncoordinated kids, which probably wasn't the best idea to avoid a lawsuit. Very quickly, these moon shoes coined the nickname Ankle Breakers. Ouch. The original design of these moon shoes was essentially springs on sharp metal wrapped around your shoes. You can still get adult versions of the shoes nowadays 
that are a little safer, but personally, I'm sticking with the trampoline on my own two feet. Anyway, with those mentioned, on to number one. And I can say pretty comfortably, the number one most dangerous toy in history is... Gilbert's Radioactive Science Kit. Yes, I am dead freaking serious. In the 1950s, this was a toy. So after the Gilbert glass blowing set, Gilbert decided his next project was to give as many kids as possible radioactive material. So in the 50s, kids lucky enough to have rich parents might have been able to afford the massively expensive $50 required to buy Gilbert's radioactive science kit. Hooray! This briefcase size set included a Geiger counter used to measure radiation, electroscope, and four jars of uranium ore. This, I guess, was so the kids could prospect for uranium. In fact, young atomic scientists could use the manual to request more uranium. I just have no words for this. With this toy, kids could create and watch chemical reactions with radioactive material, which is wonderful for the growth of science, but also wonderful for the growth of chronic radiation syndrome. Astonishingly, the set was only available from 1951 to 1952. But no, it wasn't removed because they were giving kids uranium, but instead because it was a whole $50. And back in 1951, that was a lot of cash. Adjusting for inflation, it was over 500 bucks. Fast forward to our modern day, Dr. Saridakis has actually kept a copy of this 1950s toy at the Museum of Science in Chicago, and she gives a fantastic explanation in her own video. If you're curious, I've left a link in the description. It's because it comes with three sources of radiation and four uranium ores that are also radioactive. As of today, this is a rare and valuable adult collectible. Nowadays, this toy is worth over $1,700. And also nowadays, having Gilbert's toy chemicals on you will almost certainly get you arrested or on the NSA watch list. Anyway, I think these toys show that there's a definite difference between coddling and making sure kids don't have toys that maim or kill them. Nowadays, of course, many parents have to be content with watching their kids play with a mobile phone, a tablet, or a PC. Or their kids just watching someone else play with a game or toy. Anyway, if this video did make you nervous about dangerous toys, Keep in mind, these types of toys are very rare, and it's very unlikely nowadays for a modern toy to be dangerous at all. If you're a parent and you can encourage your vaccinated kid to get outside and ride a bike or take a walk, I hope you absolutely do so. As a man who taught me to juggle once said, The world is not made of nerf. It has sharp edges, and you will get cut, but not too deep if you're careful. Not too careful, just careful enough. And if you have any thoughts on these toys or feel I missed any, feel free to leave your own thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.